In 2000, Ridley Scott's Gladiator took the world by storm, bringing to life the grandeur and brutality of ancient Rome. Now, over two decades later, get ready to step back into the arena as we present to you a top thing about Gladiator 2 that will leave you begging for more. It's a Ridley Scott production. Scott may have delegated the director's chair for Blade Runner 2049 to Denis Villeneuve, but he has kept the Gladiator sequel for himself. When he completes his quiet, intimate drama Napoleon, which is currently in post-production, production will begin. It's amusing to see him taking on back-to-back sword-swinging behemoths. In the early 2000s, Scott nearly turned down the offer to direct Hannibal from super producer Dino De Laurentiis because he mistook it for a film about the Carthaginian general and his elephants and couldn't face climbing another gladiator-sized mountain right away. He appears to have more energy today at the age of 85 than he did 23 years ago. Essentially, it's Gladiator the next generation. The cast in this film is incredible. After Sons Paul Mescal has been cast in the lead role as Lucius Verus, the grown-up son of Lucilla and the nephew of Joaquin Phoenix's Commodus. Lucius was enthralled by the heroic Maximus the last time we saw him, and he was beginning to rebel against his destiny as a Caesar, preferring the idea of a gladiator's life instead. Which did he eventually choose? Was he successful in both? We do not yet know. Mescal reportedly won the role after competing against Richard Madden, Miles Teller, Timothy Chalamet, and Austin Butler. Barry Cogan, Fresh off the success of Eternals and the Banshees of Inishirin will play Roman Emperor Geta. The real Geta's father was Septimius Severus, who served as a provincial governor under Commodus before ascending to the throne. Geta fought in the campaign against the Britons in the early 3rd century and succeeded his brother as co-emperor when Severus died. Meanwhile, Stranger Things 4 breakout Joseph Quinn plays Geta's brother Emperor Caracalla. The joint emperorship was disastrous and did not end well but going into further detail would be a spoiler. Pedro Pascal, who will film Gladiator 2 in between seasons of The Last of Us, is also on the cast list in an unspecified role. But there are also legacy players. Connie Nielsen will reprise her role as Lucius's mother, Lucilla, and Jamon Hunzu will reportedly reprise his role as the Gladiator, Juba. The latter was one of Maximus's closest companions, and he survived the first film, along with Ralph Muller's Hagen, who did not. We last saw him burying effigies of Maximus's family in the Colosseum, near where Maximus died. Scott and Denzel Washington are reuniting for an American gangster reunion. Denzel Washington, who reunites with Scott for the first time since 2007's American Gangster, is perhaps the most exciting cast addition. Washington's role was written with him in mind, and the actor told THR that the badass part excites him. While this will be Washington's second time working with Ridley, he previously worked with the filmmaker's late great director brother, Tony Scott, in Crimson Tide, Man on Fire, Deja Vu, The Taking of Pelham 123, and Unstoppable. He's no stranger to Scott Free Productions. There will also be a behind the scenes reunion. Arthur Max, who has been Scott's regular production designer since G.I. Jane in 1997, will remain in that position. Janty Yates, who won an Oscar for her work on the first film, is also returning. Gladiator was her first job for Scott and she's been with him ever since. But she worked with his son Jake first on the Highwaymen romp Plunkett and McLean in 1999. Neil Corbold, whose regular gigs as Scott's special effects supervisor began with Gladiator, will be, well, supervising the special effects in Gladiator 2. It's a family affair. It does not make use of Nick Cave's well-known wild screenplay. John Logan, the original Gladiator screenwriter, had written a draft screenplay for a sequel set years after the first film and focused on Lucius as early as 2005. Scott explained to Empire, it's the next generation, I'd never go back to the gladiatorial side. Roman history is so exotic that any aspect of it is enthralling. This direction, however, did not find favor at the time with DreamWorks, who thought it was simply not gladiator enough. With the project stalled, Russell Crowe decided to go in a completely different direction, enlisting the help of the maverick Australian alt-rocker and occasional screenwriter Nick Cave. Russell Crowe read the proposition, and I'd heard that he liked it. The bad seed spoke of the encounter. G'day, mate, it's Russell here, said the phone. I'm like Russell who? Russell Crowe. I'm like to my wife, it's fucking Russell Crowe. He says, are you still interested in writing scripts? I said, no, mate, I'm not. I don't want to do that. He says, what about writing Gladiator 2? And I'm like, all right. And I said, didn't you die in Gladiator 1? He goes, you sort that out, mate. 
Cave's solution was more bizarre than anyone could have imagined, involving the dead Maximus in the afterlife being tasked by a pantheon of old gods to get rid of this new guy, Christ, who is gaining popularity and draining their power. Maximus eventually becomes an immortal champion, returning to Earth to fight in major conflicts such as the Crusades and Vietnam. Cave told Mark Marin that he wanted to call it Christ Killer and that he enjoyed writing it because I knew on every level it was never going to get made. Scott appears to have enjoyed and been amused by it as well, never taking it seriously. Crow's response was reportedly brief, don't like it mate. David Scarpa wrote this version. The new film is thus not Cave's insane vision, but rather something more akin to John Logan's original draft. The exact plot of the film has yet to be revealed, so everything we currently know must be inferred from the cast list. Scarpa was a writer and showrunner on Scott's The Man in the High Castle, and he also wrote screenplays for All the Money in the World and Napoleon. His final draft of the Gladiator sequel was finished and signed off on before the writer strike began. We might get a Hans Zimmer score. So we don't know who's going to score this one yet. However, Hans Zimmer, who composed the incredible original Gladiator score back in the day, could return. While he hasn't worked directly with Scott since Matchstick Men in 2003, and maybe too preoccupied with Dune Part 2, he did score the Scott-produced Blade Runner 2049. Is it not supported by a Zimmer frame? Given the number of crew members who have followed Scott from Napoleon to the Gladiator sequel, Martin Phipps could be in the running. Or Harry Gregson Williams, who has previously composed five scores, each for Ridley and Tony. It has been established at Paramount. For those who are interested in studio wranglings, the original Gladiator was produced by DreamWorks but the sequel will be produced by Paramount. Universal, which distributed Gladiator internationally, still has the option to be involved, but it's unclear whether they've done so or if they intend to. It's unclear whether it'll be a part of a streaming deal. If so, it could be with Paramount+. Plus. However, given that Napoleon is getting a theatrical release from Sony before being released on Apple TV+, Plus, Ridley may be looking for a dual-pronged approach for this one. It will arrive sooner than you think. Scott moves at breakneck speed these days, after releasing The Last Duel and House of Gucci just weeks apart in 2021, he's going straight from post-production on Napoleon into Gladiator 2, which currently has a November 22, 2024 release date penciled in. That makes it a prime candidate for lightning striking twice during Oscar season, and it could provide Ridley Scott with his first Best Director award. He lost to Steven Soderbergh for traffic in 2001. Here's hoping we're all sufficiently entertained. Well, that's it. For now, make sure that you like our video. Please share your views and opinions in the comments section with us. Subscribe to the channel to get updated regularly with the latest news and reviews on upcoming movies from us. And do not forget to hit the bell icon to never miss an update. Thanks for watching the video. We'll see you at the next one. The next one.